In the previous Module 6, Lesson 1, we talked about artifacts and collecting them for your portfolio. In Lesson 2, we will discuss writing up and curating good representative artifacts in your portfolio to showcase your teaching. If you are relatively new to teaching, you might want to build up your portfolio, but not have that many artifacts on hand. Perhaps some handouts or worksheets here, a course syllabus or two there, quizzes and tests, a resource website you designed for your students, and so forth, items you took the time previously to create and use. Those are great to include, but you may want to build more. One plentiful and easy source for artifacts is classroom activities. But often, the activities you do in class and the reasons you do them may be in your head and never get written down. Writing them up can have many potential benefits, which will soon be discussed. Let's get started. Take some time now to describe one of your favorite classroom activities. Keep the following questions in mind while doing your description. What is the purpose of the activity? What steps are involved in preparing for and doing the activity? How long does it take? What about it do you particularly like? How have the students responded to it? Does it connect to some aspect of your philosophy of teaching? Hopefully so. If you are doing tips with a partner, take turns now sharing your favorite activity. Be sure to ask for clarification if you aren't sure about something your partner has described. If you're flying solo, try outlining or free writing about your activity. Pause the video here, and when you are done, click on the play button to continue. That was fairly easy to do, right? It's fun to go over your favorite activities. In our tip series, as you have wisely surmised, we encourage our participants to go the one step further and do write-ups of their favorite activities. They should be done in sufficient detail so that another teacher could easily read and replicate them. We have provided activity write-up guidelines and a sample on the TIPS website, as well as in the Dig Deeper section for this lesson, to assist you. Activity write-ups can be valuable for a number of reasons. First and foremost, for yourself. It helps showcase your great teaching ideas. And even if it's an idea you originally got from elsewhere, you no doubt have put your own unique twist on it. And don't forget this scenario. All of us have hit upon an activity that we love and our students love, but after a while we get tired of it and hibernate it for a while. Then years later we think, oh, I want to use that again. And well, you can't quite remember how to do it. If it's already written up, all it takes is a quick read and you're back in the saddle again. Finally, having activity write-ups in your portfolio can be useful for interview situations, should you have ones handy that are appropriate for the job. For example, let's say you are applying for a position teaching ESL writing. The interviewers may very well ask you to describe writing activities you have done in the past or that you feel really helps students learn. It can be impressive not only to talk about what you do, but also hand them a copy of the activity write-up detailing it exactly. It shows you as being extra prepared and organized. Secondly, activity write-ups are great for sharing with colleagues. Perhaps a fellow teacher is looking for a new way of introducing or practicing a particular language concept or function and is at a loss. You could say, wait, I have just the thing, and hand them your write-up. If your department has a repository for activity ideas that are shared among colleagues, you could add to it. If your department doesn't have one and fellow educators are interested, you could start one and collectively contribute to it over time, creating a valuable and powerful resource for not only your own use, but for future colleagues. Finally, if you've taken the time to do some write-ups, why not present on your teaching activity ideas at a conference and provide them as handouts? Many language teaching conferences welcome these types of very practical activity sharing sessions. Finally, you've come this far, why not get your activity published and share it with the world? 
A number of local, regional, and national language teaching organizations have regular or periodic calls for activity write-ups to appear on their websites, in their newsletters, or in their print or electronic publications. A good example is TESOL's New Ways series, where individual books on hot topics in the profession contain oodles of activity write-ups from a wide variety of authors. Check to see if language teaching organizations you belong to have such opportunities, and also peruse the TIPS website or Dig Deeper section for links to potential activity publishers. And remember, having publications in your CV makes you that much more attractive as a candidate and shows you as a contributing member to the profession. Getting published may be a desired but nerve-wracking proposition for many people, but activity write-ups can be an easy way to start. And in fact, quite a few TIPS participants have taken this to heart, submitted their activity write-ups, and gotten published. As confidence and experience in the profession grows, other publications may soon follow, from book reviews to journal articles to textbooks, or may include digital formats such as resource websites, mobile apps, and more. So hopefully, you can see that there are multiple avenues for adding a wide range of artifacts to your portfolio to show who you are as a teacher. Just keep collecting and writing and publishing as you go. One final note, your teacher portfolio filing cabinet is your personal record encompassing all that you do as an educator. However, it will eventually become too big and unwieldy for sharing purposes. Just like artists bring portfolios of their best or most representative works, not their entire collection, you should periodically curate your portfolio to identify your best or most representative artifacts. A key question to ask during the process is, does it reflect or exemplify my philosophy of teaching? If not, perhaps you should make a different selection. If all your curated artifacts echo your philosophy of teaching, it creates a very cohesive and compelling image throughout. Lastly, consider adding a reflection piece to your curated artifacts, detailing, for example, why you selected it, what it reveals or communicates about you as a teacher, and so forth. For example, perhaps you selected an activity write-up that originally did not work well, causing you to reevaluate and make changes, which then garnered great success. In this way, a reader could learn more background and see a window into your professional development. Such reflection statements are often included in curated electronic portfolios or physical portfolios submitted for job reviews. Best wishes as you collect and curate your artifacts. Next up, test what you've learned in lesson two in the think section. Use the guidelines, sample, and resources in the dig deeper section to do your own activity write-up and consider possibly getting it published if you can find an appropriate venue. Finally, respond to the prompt in the discuss section to complete this module. Oh, and one more thing. Once you are done with Module 6, you can do the remaining modules in whichever order, depending on your needs. If you are currently job hunting and may have interviews coming up soon, do Module 7, Interviews, next. If you are not seeking positions at this time and would rather complete your portfolio first, skip ahead to Module 8, putting it all together. Then do the remaining module afterwards. Cheers!